us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Savior to take flesh and to submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit the share of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, not have turned my back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory. became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with the apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who will, is to betray me is the one with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it's been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kingdoms of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority are dressed as benefactors, but among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table or the one who serves, is not the one seated at table. I am among you as one who serves, and as you stood by me in my trials, and I confer a kingdom on you just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail. And once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you'll deny me three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or sack or sandals, 
for your need of anything. They replied, he said to them, but now one who has the money bag should take it, likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that the scripture must be fulfilled in me. Namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, But he replied, It is enough. And going out, he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, And one of them struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, this is the the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man was too with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. About an hour later, still another insisted, But surely this man too was with him, for he is also a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing him and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When day came, the council of elders of the people met, both chief priests and scribes, and they brought him before their Sanhedrin. They said, But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe. If I question you, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the, of the Jews? 
He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds. I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been wanting to see him for a long time, for he had heard about him, and he had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuously and mocked him, and after clothing him in resplendent garb, they sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us, so no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But altogether they shouted out, Now Barabbas had been imprisoned for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed them, still wishing to release Jesus, but they continued their shouting. Pilate addressed him a third time. What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been in prison for rebellion and murder for whom they asked, and he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time, people will say to the mountains, fall upon us, and the hills cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, 
Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, who witnessed what had happened, glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which his body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we begin Holy Week with this Palm Sunday. Our liturgy today began with blessing branches, singing Hosanna, and proclaiming that Jesus is King. And then in a matter of minutes, in a whirlwind of events, we call for the crucifixion of this king. And minutes later, this king was crucified, died, and is now buried in a tomb. For us as Catholics, Holy Week is a special week. Special with rituals that are only done once a year. Scriptures that have special meaning during this time of the year. And music that only gets sung once a year. And all these things are special. But you know, these things are special, not just the rituals and scriptures and the music by themselves. But it's in how we approach them which makes them special. We can approach this week as simply jumping through a hoop so that we can get to, get to next week, Easter Sunday, with the eggs and chocolate bunnies, jelly beans and whatever it is that we look forward to for next week. 
And as a result of this, Holy Week will just be an okay week. Nothing special. Or we can approach this week with our whole hearts and lives, surrounding our whole selves to the Lord during this Holy Week, and live in the moment of this week. So that hearts and lives can be touched, not only be touched, but be transformed. And so in doing this, that this week is special. And it's a faith-moving experience. Less than two weeks before I was ordained a priest, our moderator general from Rome came to the United States to visit all the members with one-on-one meetings. And I had my meeting with him, and part of our conversation we talked about the upcoming ordination. And he gave me some advice. He said some priests, when they get ordained, ordination is not a spiritually moving event. They're worried about all the details that are part of the day. He said when you get ordained, do not worry about where people are but live in the moment of getting ordained. You get ordained only once. I followed that advice, and getting ordained was a special experience. Not only do I follow that, did I follow that advice, but I give similar advice to couples at wedding rehearsals. At the end of a wedding rehearsal, I often tell them we went over a lot of details today. But on your wedding day tomorrow, I want you to live in the moment of getting married, enjoying everything about it. You only get married once. And so as we begin this Holy Week, I want to give you some similar advice. Holy Week only comes once a year. I invite you to come to each of the liturgies during the Easter Triduum on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Check the bulletin for further details. And not only come, but when you come, come with your whole self. Leaving outside, outside. And I'll live in the moment of being here. For in doing this, you will have a faith filled, transformative week. The Lord transforms our lives, and so we profess together, I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things which are in this world. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God.
With faith in our God, we bring forth our prayers. For the church on earth, may Jesus, our Savior, keep us faithful and lead us in the way of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For the salvation of the world, may God's love soften the hearts and minds of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For all preparing to enter the church, may the Holy Spirit fill them with the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For our family, our faith, may God use our fasting, alms, and prayer for the glory and draw us closer to himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died in faith, especially during this Lenten season, may they rejoice with the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered, for the names in our St. Monica book, and for the special intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, our God, we place before you our prayers and trust. Trust that you will hear and answer them the way that you see us fit. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn can be found in the Source and Summit Missal number 311, O Sacred Head Surrounded.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O oh Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Song to by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you things broken, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that to partake in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to make sure of my word, but I
chalice cannot pass without my drinking it. Your will be done. found in the Source and Summit Missal, number 275, My Song is Love Unknown.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements this morning. Uh, first, please take home a bulletin today which has a list of times for the Holy Week liturgies this week. You'll also find times for confessions. There are no confessions from Holy Thursday through Easter Sunday. Booklets are available in the back of church for those who like to participate in the Divine Mercy Novena, which we get on Good Friday and ends on the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. Also, I've been told, been, the sign tells me in the back that there's coffee and donuts across the street in our new parish center. And lastly, I have tickets for the Dayton Dragons games. I'll put on the communion rail for those who might be interested in those. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is in the Source and Summit Missile, number 451, Were You There?